We'll call the board workshop to order. First item on the agenda is from the board president. Uh, this evening I have a first reading of revision to policy number 5200, the comprehensive student attendance policy. There are minor there are copies of this um, on the back table. Copies of this policy on the back table. And also the first reading of a revision to policy number 5441, the eligibility for student athletic and extracurricular activity participation. Um, minor changes in both of these. Uh, Ms. Rash, I don't know if you want to speak to them or if you'd like um, Ms. May to speak to them. The changes are really clarifying changes um, for the uh, the comprehensive student attendance policy 5200. Um, it, it, it clarified that students who fall below the 90% attendance uh, at the end of the previous school year um, can try out for fall sports and activities and participate in practices. And they can also participate in games prior to the start of the student instructional year. But once the student instructional year um, starts, then the 90% attendance level time starts to um, run. So it made it clear that, at least for purposes of the sports during the autumn, that students, for example, who might participate in football wouldn't be precluded from playing um, in at least a substantial number of games. So that was the only clarification there. That same piece is in policy 5441. And then the only other piece that's different is that it says, um, currently says that any student failing two or more subjects at the end of the school year is ineligible to participate in athletic and or extracurricular activities in the fall. But there, there is um, an interesting, uh, situation that can occur where somebody can pass all four quarters but yet fail at the end of the school year. So in order to make it more equitable, it will now say that if a student is failing two or more courses at the end of the fourth quarter of a school year, they will be ineligible. Those are the two changes. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Our first report this evening is from Marlon Damon, McCordy, and District Architects. Terry. Good evening, and thank you. Uh, I took the opportunity uh, before you came in to place the uh, monthly status update report uh, for each of the board members, uh, board president. Superintendent Andy, I think you have your copy. Uh, a little early this month, so the report was not um, uh, published in time to get out of the packet. So I thought I'd bring it to you this evening, leave it with you, uh, walk through a couple of things, and if you have any questions, if you could get those to the superintendent, he'll pass those along to us, and we'll be happy to address those um, before next week's meeting. Um, generally speaking, I think uh, since we met last, we had the bus tour, uh, summer construction work was completed as required for school opening. Um, there are a few things that remain to be completed, which is not uncommon, but none of those were uh, anything that affected opening day and the return of students and staff. Um, the contractors will be working over the course of the next 30 to 60 days to complete any unfinished work that remained from the summer, and they'll also be working on their punch lists over the course of the next 30 to 60 days as well. Uh, you'll find in your update uh, there are several punch lists that have been provided. There are still several other punch lists that need to be finalized and issued to the contractors, and we're going to push to get those done within the next couple of weeks. The work that was planned to continue into the fall is primarily at dams, and that work is in full swing on the B-Wing. Uh, for those of you that had an opportunity to go on the bus tour, um, it's like a bowling alley. You can look from one end of the wing to the, uh, to the other end of the wing. All of the original classroom uh, partition walls have been removed. That, that section of the building is being completely reconstructed and reconfigured. Um, 
with the summer construction behind us, our work will now shift and we'll start to focus on the projects that will be considered for next summer. Um, we have work that will be done at Foster Town and Heritage. And then we have some additional projects to be evaluated at GAMS, which would be um, the kitchen renovation project and a second art room. And then there are three projects at NFA that we've been asked to look at that um, are being advanced to design. That would be the conversion of the former weight room into the girls' locker room, uh, dish room renovation, and the library renovations. Um, each of these projects needs to be wrapped up and they need to be submitted to SED for building permits and our goal would be to bid these um, in, over the early spring months so we'd be ready to start construction in the summer. Uh, we will also be working on the closeout of projects that have been wrapped up over the course of the last 18 months. This will allow us to update our overall budget status and we should be able to provide you with an update uh, probably in November with regard to where we are. That will help uh, you make some decisions as we go forward as it relates to some of these additional projects that we've been asked to advance to the design stage and issue for permitting. I think that's uh, kind of a quick overview of where we are, Mr. Pizzo. Anybody has any general questions? Yes, Ms. Prokash. I, I have a general question. Uh, I was not able to uh, go on the bus trip, but I did go after that to uh, do the full. <clears throat> and one of my main concerns was at South Junior uh, in the courtyard area, specifically uh, with the door that goes uh, in the courtyard to the auditorium. Uh, it seems to me I mean, the, the door is, is such a shabbily uh, constructed thing, uh, the way it was put in with the, uh, the wood over the top and, and the bottom, as if the door was, as if the frame was too small and you, you know, you attached it to, not you, um, they attached it to wood framing around it. And then the, you could actually put your foot through the bottom panels on the outside. And for everything that was done in the courtyard with the windows and so forth, I, I don't understand how that, you know, that came about, that that door is like that. I mean, well, there's a number of doors at South High that are in question, um, but when I think I questioned it, they would said, well, it would have happened then abated uh, if they put the new frame in, you know, if they took that frame out and put, you know, a new frame in because of uh, possible, um, what do you call it? Uh, asbestos. Asbestos. Could be asbestos. Asbestos, you know. Um, which I don't quite understand because the whole courtyard was, um, we had the scaffolds up in the courtyard with all the windows and it was abated all around the windows. Why wouldn't they abate around the door in the same courtyard? You know what I'm saying? If the windows had it, the door would have to have it. And I don't understand why that wasn't done by the construction. Um, so that the whole thing was done the right manner instead of one being slapped, you know, slapped together and the other one's being done the right way. There are two different things that we're, we're um, looking at. The first is the installation of the new frame and door. Uh -huh. What you saw was an unfinished condition. They were not done yet. And the gap that you mentioned, the old doors were not a regular size. So we ordered standard size doors and, and frames to be more cost effective with a new installation. That's why there's a difference, the gap at the top or the sides that you may have seen. That was to allow us to put a standard size frame and doors in those openings. Those will be, if they have not been, those will be trimmed the way they should be. With regard to the areas at the bottom where you could literally put your foot in, that's the old trim that remains, was not originally part of the project to be removed and replaced. Um, project was designed back in 08, they may not have been in that bad a condition at that point in time. We didn't change the spec for the doors and frames by addendum when that project went out to bid to actually add more frame installations. What we've asked the architects to do, given the condition, especially in that location, together with any other areas around the exterior of the building, go back and look at those and see what can be done to either remove or, if we need to, replace some of that other exterior trim. 
not something that was part of their original contract, so we're going to go back and look at that now. Because I mean, with all the other extras that are added on for unforeseen conditions or things that were omitted, this and that, and then to put a door in, like, you know, like that, you know, defeats the purpose of putting a new door in. That's being addressed. You know, and, and I also wonder in my mind, when they put the framing up, did they put it into solid wood? I mean, that's not their right away, you know, where they put the frame in. We'll check that. Typically, they're not going to install anything that's not appropriate. Yeah. But we'll look at that. Okay. Yeah. And also, uh, the door on the outside of the gym, when, when they put that door in on the, the bluff side, you have that nice uh, the uh, half round. semicircle all yes. above it. Yeah. That gets refinished as well. There's um, a plaster material that's going to go over that to refinish that. Is that part of the? That's part of the project. Okay. It just has not been finished yet. And it'll be a green color to match the frames and doors. Okay. That's scheduled to be done before the, the weather breaks. Okay. And the other frames, there's a couple other frames too, wasn't there just for the last? That, um... I was talking to Terry about that before the meeting. And tomorrow we want to go to south and look at the other ones. Okay. We understand the concern and we'll address those things. If the contractor owes us anything from their base contract work, we'll make sure we get it. And the stuff that we need to add, we're going to look at and Good. make sure we get those cleaned up. Good. And also on the stairs at Temple Hill, uh, the new stairs they put in, which are really yes. nice. Um, that tread they put so that you don't slip, it's all jagged, like above that tread. Are they going to trim that off? That's actually included in one of the punch lists that are in, in your uh, report. Okay. And I had a separate conversation with the contractor about that. There's a couple of things we want to make sure that they address before the, the weather turns and it gets cold. Because that's just going to chip up. Yeah, they're both, uh, both of those were identified in the report that you have and both have been discussed with the contractor. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Damon? Thank you, Mr. Damon. Thank you. Next, we have uh, a STEM extended school year program update. For many years, the district has offered our students opportunities to participate in project-based science, technology, engineering, and math initiatives, better known as STEM funded through various grants and working with our community partners, we have been able to provide successful summer experiences for our students. Mr. Anthony Grice, Grants Development Assistant and Facilitator for two of these programs, will present to us tonight a brief overview of our summer STEM programs. He will be assisted by Sonia Dixon and Mrs. Grice. Anthony? Well, she is beautiful, but... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Diesel, and thank you, board members. This is actually uh, Ebony. Oh, thank you. Because sometimes, sometimes you get these in the other word. I apologize for marrying the two of you. I really didn't have the authority. It was my fault, okay? Just say. Well, we kind of worked at it because we worked the uh, Blackrock program together. So we. I'll take Mr. Johnson, you don't have that on tape, do you? <laughs> I do have a, uh, what, what has come around to you is a uh, PowerPoint slide that I'm going to uh, go through.
Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, STEM. The following PowerPoint, um, oh wait, it took off. So, the following PowerPoint highlights some of the events from all these programs and why we do STEM programs. Okay, so this first thing is why we should, why we should improve STEM learning experiences. From the research, only 43% of graduating high school seniors are ready for college math, only 27% of graduating high school seniors are ready for college science, only 16% of bachelor's degree awarded, bachelor's degrees awarded, thank you, in the US are awarded in STEM fields, a much lower rate than other countries. So one of our programs that we had was what we call NanoSquad. That happens up at the University of Albany, and that's in a partnership with the Center for Urban Youth and Technology and the Institute of Technology and Youth. Both of those programs are at SUNY Albany. This program took 40 students from 7th and 8th grade up to SUNY Albany campus for an overnight trip during the entire week of July 9th to, the, to July 13th. While there, the students went into the nanoscale building to complete experiments with microchips, nanofibers, robots, and RCF airplanes. Students were also in the classroom for character education, technology, and energy conservation classes. So here are some of the things. <coughs> um, one of those trips that we do up to Albany is Nano Career Day. Uh, if you remember back in, Back in April, uh, Mr. Romano and a group of students went up and the, the TV reporters were up there because the day before that, President Obama was there. And so the TV reporters were still there. So the Nano Career Day is something that we do on a yearly basis that we've been doing with SUNY Albany. And some of those students that we choose, um, that have been chosen to go to Nano Career Day, we also invite them for the um, summer program for the And that is some of the students uh, up at the University of Albany, they're the great thing, so mm -hmm. one of the college workers there. And then that lists all of the schools that participate. And as you see, we've had South Middle School and Temple Hill School, but then all of our students from the University and Large City School District are able to go up for Nano Career Day. These are some of the students working on uh, the robots that we do with it. <coughs> and that, that, that visit from President Obama. We did try to get an opportunity to go up there that day, but it, uh, <coughs> I think the tickets were all gone by the time we even heard about it. Uh, the University of Albany College now Scale Science and hosted for us President Barack Obama on May 8th. Um, he did, I do have a quote, yes. You have an outstanding university, now I want what's happening in Albany to happen across the country, and we would certainly hope so. This was a trip that we, we were on a hiking trip, and I forget the name of the park, but it was, it was just awesome, so I, I definitely wanted to include that. We hiked for about um, a little under a mile that day, and the students really, really enjoyed it. Another one of our programs was the Summer Science Camp. It was through a partnership with Liberty Partnership um, Program of SUNY Orange. This program took place on the SUNY Orange campus in Newburgh from July 9th to July 20th for the first session. And then they had a second session from July 23rd to August 3rd. Uh, the program targeted students from 6th to 8th grade and over 90 <coughs> students attended this program. And students did various project-based activities about alternative energy and forensic science. And so that's them there, looking at some forensic science things. Um, and alternative energy. Some of the things that they do during that time. That is one of our... For this program, we did have district teachers working that program. That is Mr. Petrie, I know you see his back. And he was doing an experiment with some of the students. So I did think that he was going to be able to show up tonight, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to make it. And those are those students again. I, I, won't, I won't go back. Okay, I don't know how to go back 
also during that during that program. At the end, they had a culminating event. I didn't put those pictures up there because I didn't take good pictures on my iPhone when we went for that event. But what they did was the students displayed everything that they've been learning during that two-week program. They also put on a skit where, um, because they did forensic science, so they put on a skit where uh, a crime scene had happened and then they had to solve that crime scene. So it was very nice, but being caught up in everything, I just didn't take um, the great pictures like I, like I wanted to after I looked at it. Another one of the programs that we had was the Black Rock Forest program, the New Windsor Black Rock is what we call it. That was a program that Ebony and I had worked together. Uh, that program is through a partnership with Black Rock Forest Consortium in Maryland from July 16th to July 27th. This program targeted students from fifth and sixth grade and had on average 98 students. And students will alternate a full day at Black Rock Forest and then a full day at New Windsor School. And at Black Rock, the students completed research on aquatic life and forest life. And then at New Windsor, they completed journal writing on their Black Rock observations. They read books and with a forest theme to build literacy skills in the science content areas. And they completed research using the internet and did grade level math. And then lunch was provided um, daily by Abraham's Table. The students really, really enjoyed the lunch by Abraham's Table. This year, they had the rats. Um, the peanut butter and jelly, we couldn't keep enough of those, so that was really, and it just really helped with that program. And then um, we transported some of that, I would transport some of that in my truck for the students that spent the whole day at Black Rock, and it just really worked out well for them. So that was really great. And these are some of the students. What they do with these, the, the long poles in the net, it's a kick net, and so they put it in the stream, and they kick it, and they whatever's at the bottom of that stream, bugs, insects, other things, they catch it and do some examinations with that. Uh, these are some of the students in the classroom working in their journals. Uh, this summer, I think it did everything but snow during the summertime. There was there was a um, there was a severe thunderstorm watch. There was severe heat. There was uh, a, several things. It was just a hell. Everything was going on. But the students were so excited about going out to Black Rock. We couldn't, one of the days we were up there, and we had a, um, an agreement with the bus company that we would call them in case we needed them to come back and pick up the students early if the weather uh, got too severe. The students didn't want, it started to rain a little while. I wanted to call for the bus to just send them back to New Windsor. The students didn't want to go. So we had to get some makeshift ponchos until the bus came for those students who really wanted to go out and still do the experiments. Okay. Another one of our programs um, that we just did this summer, so it was a new program for us, was the Next High High, is do a partnership with Network Science Center at West Point, Boston University, and the New York Hall of Science. And this program targets students from 10th and 11th grade and took eight of our NFA students for an overnight trip to Boston University from July 20th to July 25th. Uh, Veronica Duncan and Ms. Cooper uh, were the two teachers that went up with the students for this program. And so at the board meeting, Veronica is going to speak about that in more detail, so I don't want to take too much of what she's going to say away from her. Um, but it, it was an excellent program. It is an excellent program. So while in Boston, the students learned how to complete scientific research and chose the topic to study. Uh, during the school year, students will continue their research at a research lab at West Point and at school. And then upon completion, the students will present their findings at a culminating event conference. Um, and this, this experience fits the true definition of independent study. Those students, um, while they're up there, they learn about network science. I didn't even know what network science was until we met the lady, Lori Sheets, was her name. I didn't. And, um, and they get, get a chance to do research, to learn the research language. And then when they come back after school, sometimes on the weekends, they continue this research. And then they'll go back up 
to Boston and present the research findings. I believe the research that they're doing is on social networking and how messages travel from one person to the next. But again, I'll let Verona uh, uh, talk about that more. The reason. Mr. Grace, do you yes. know when they're going to be going to that conference? I want to say again? in June, but we don't have a, a, a definitive date. It's in April. It's in April. But then once we get a definitive date, our plan is to let everyone know about that date and invite them up there. This is the first year that we did this program. However, this grant is a three-year grant. So our plan is to send another group of eight students up again and then and then on the third year also. Also from this opportunity, students will have an opportunity to possibly have an internship in a STEM field somewhere. Uh, the reason why that happened for the Network Science Center is because of the work that uh, funded programs has been doing with Nano Squad up at SUNY Albany, and the work that Pamela Hudson peterson has been doing with West Point volunteers. They heard about that work, Lori Sheets and a few other people heard about that work that we were doing, and so they brought that opportunity to us. And so um, we met them at, when we had the robotics night at South Middle School, I believe some, yeah. yes. Yep. When we had the robotics night at South Middle School, and so from that we had a few other meetings, I believe Dr. Shanahan was there, and really helped us move that forward. So thank you for that, Dr. Shanahan. And these are uh, those students. That's Lori Sheets. I hope that she'll be able to come down up um, next week and uh, Ms. Donovan and Ms. Cooper and those students. These are those students figuring out how that how the network works. Uh, and like I was saying, this, it was the kickoff and then uh, an end of the year project conference and opportunities and then it's as we get to know this, I will disseminate it to, to everyone. And these are them again. <coughs> Same uh, that's it. I'm going to I think. Okay. I did have one more thing. And in all of these programs, the students have or will present their information, the information that they learn. They either have display boards or um, the tripod boards. Sometimes they do a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, sometimes they do a performance. Sometimes they do put things in writing when, when it's the culminating event. Uh, for these programs to have been successful, it really took a tremendous amount of planning. And funded programs, we do uh, extended school year programs is not only a way to engage students and increase student achievement, but also for preparation for the next school year. Uh, we look at how the program is going to fit with district initiatives, the funding needed, logistics, and how it can benefit the most students in a concrete educational way. Uh, with that in mind, we start planning for these events in March. Uh, we, we look at the funding, we think about how that program is going to fit, where is it going to be housed, how many students, you know, we really try to get as many students as we can. Um, also, we develop a rapport with our community partners that allows us to make the adjustments and improvements to our program. And then many of these community partners have done other events with funded programs throughout the school year. Uh, the Three Doctors event, when we had that event, our community partners really helped a lot with us moving that event forward. Uh, and then we enjoy working with them because, you know, they have a proven track record. They, they bring quality to the table, they bring great ideas to the table, they bring resources, and so we like working with our community partners. Um, and it encourages other community partners to say, you know, let's work with, with the school district because we can get these special programs done. Now I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Any more uh, information or questions, you can contact funded programs.
because a lot of the work we see do there is working with robotics. Human hands are not used very often anymore. And uh, it would also give the uh, students a chance to see what a real clean room looks like compared to what they're uh, seeing on TV. Today. We have, I'm going to let Sonia answer that. Okay. One of the, up at Albany, um, IBM is one of the companies up there, uh, along with the sum of my other I couldn't tell you there. <coughs> I'll take those myself on work when I needed to work. <laughs> yeah. And actually, it's funny how we meet people in the past and they remember, um, they remember our, our former superintendents, Dr. Sadanelli, one of the members from IBM, remember Dr. Sadanelli. And she actually worked with our partner up at SUNY Albany. So she had inquired if we could, you know, do some programming with her. And so we are working to go into IBM, do Albany and with her, because she's local. They'll probably also, uh, I know they used to give tours years ago. Uh, I think they still do, of the clean rooms. Uh, and for the kids to learn about the flows in the clean room and things like that, and how things are actually handled and the delicacy of uh, what's being done there. I, I didn't show it on because I have, uh, for that program, I do have a lot of teachers. When the students do go to the, um, the nanotech building up there, some of them do get an opportunity to put on the clean suit and then to go in. Uh, a lot of the labs that we do are in that environment and so it's just really really a great environment those students they're up there they're they're teenagers and so they're up there a week many of them that is the first time they've been away from home and it's a whole week they come back changed i come back changed <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so i just wanted to say thank you yes we have a question mm -hmm. about follow-up are we doing anything to see what effect this has on the children during the regular school year? We are planning to do follow-up with the students and to and to track their grades. What we we've, we've done is so far with the Albany program, we normally do an evaluation in which we go back and we ask the students what effect this has had, and we have a write up an evaluation report to Albany. They're also, not necessarily the most effective you know, ones to answer that question. Uh, I would think you're know, looking at their performance in their science classes or math classes you know, would be more interesting. I, I'm, I'm not concerned about the, the value of the program, but I just think it would make all of us feel very good to know that it was really having some character. Okay. And we will do that. I, I didn't mention uh, the New York State School Board Association was there for this last Albany trip. They um, they did take a video, did something for their news article, and so I believe it was in there. Also, it was in the on board, I believe. Yes. I remember seeing the picture. Yes, mm -hmm. it is there. Um, also, for that program, I did put together a small like a video movie thing. And we also asked um, Mr. Grice um, that these presentations be put up on the district's website. Right. So again, so we continually sharing with the community all the fabulous programs that are going on and the opportunities that are here in the district for our students. Mr. Levenstein? Yeah, I went to a couple of the um, end of the year projects them, and these kids are really enthusiastic. I, I don't know, I, I'm assuming it's affecting their grades, but it, it is affecting their outlook on school and science. They they're really got into looking for bugs and, and, and learning about the water and all that stuff. It's very interesting. Yeah. Mrs. McAfee? Yeah, I, I just wondered if uh, having the students actually make those presentations in their classes in September might be a, a way of motivating not only the students themselves, but the other kids. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a possibility, since they've already prepared uh, mm -hmm. whatever it is, the PowerPoint or whatever, have them share it then with their classmates. 
Great idea. Thank you. You've already done. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Woodhull. And yes, Abraham said well, thank you for oh. taking this food, thank and uh, we will supply you again next year. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Very, very much appreciated. Good <laughs> to do it. Thank you very much. Next on the agenda is Resolution B, to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. The NFA North Boys Gym renovation, Gams renovating project, Heritage Middle School, interior bleachers, gym divider wall, and locker room alterations project. Questions on any of these? Especially when Mr. Damon is still here. <laughs> we all look at you. <laughs> no questions tonight from Ms. Burkott. I'm getting so off. I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> Resolution C is to approve, approve facility use requests, Mr. Velez. Thank you, Mr. Piso. Tonight we have uh, nine different organizations that apply to use our facilities. We discussed this in Billings and Grounds earlier today. One of the comments, suggestions from Mr. Prokos is to let these groups know whoever is using the school after December, we are going to send them a letter that the fees might change. So we're going to approve this request through December. Anything goes after that, it will come back to the board at a later meeting. Do you, want, do you want to take um, the opportunity now to discuss the um, work that you've done through buildings and grounds in regards to looking at the fees? We, we have spent a couple of hours the last few weeks uh, comparing what we charge to our groups, organizations compared to other districts in, in our area, uh, Middletown and Poughkeepsie are the two that we have. And we are trying to come up with a fee schedule that will help our district uh, cover the cost. We're not looking to make any money out of the organization, but right now what we're charging is not covering the district cost to rent our facilities. Hopefully in the next couple of months, we'll be bringing to the public and to the full board what we are proposing right now, we are at the early stages. Hopefully by, I will say the end of this month, I have something more in concrete for the board to discuss. Thank you. Resolution D to create a district Facebook account. Um, this resolution, um, I just want to point out, the, you know, the purpose of this is for facilitating the dissemination of information to the community um, regarding issues and activities in the schools. So um, it's not going to be a Facebook page, like a, a public, you know, interactive thing. We're not going to have information going back and forth. But because social media, so many organizations have a Facebook page now to disseminate the information, we're trying to move into the 21st century and be on board with that. But the purpose is simply to disseminate information about activities and, and events and um, opportunities that are going on in the district. Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Well, I have a couple of concerns, and that was one of them. That, um, there would be postings by people that would go on. So we're not about that. That's, that's certainly a good thing. The other thing that, that concerned me was um, having equity in access to it from, from the, whether it's by school, whether it's by grade, whether it's by subject, that sometimes things aren't evenly um, dispersed and, and we want to make sure, and I think there should be some rules or policies beforehand in reference to that who's going to decide what gets put up there and, and that there is equity so it's, it's, it's each school district has, 
Each school building has a fair share of getting things up. Each subject matter does, each grade does. It would be done um, centrally through um, the communications specialist here in the district. So anyone that wanted to share information would send it to uh, Ms. Buttrick and it would well, get... You have to be careful if it's anyone that wants to. I, I, I went to one of the meetings at the school board in reference to this, and you, you have, are you gonna say that, okay, any teacher can say, I wanna put this up there. So they just wanna set guidelines or rules beforehand that it, it's not every single employee has access to say, this is what I want put up, and they put it up. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't have it. I think you should think about who is gonna gonna edit or who is gonna have control of of what goes up there? It's gonna be the communications department who, you know, again, with anything that might be in question, we have counsel that they can, you know, ask if that would be appropriate. Certainly they work closely with the superintendent for, you know, deciding what might be appropriate or not appropriate. But any, anything as far as the district advertising any of their programs or opportunities, I don't see how that would, would be an issue. Because anything that is being supported by the district, we certainly wouldn't mind sharing that information on our... I, 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 yes, Mrs. McAfee. Just remember, we used to think about that on the, the, on the yearbooks. Uh, that, what could there possibly be? in a high school yearbook. And we certainly have learned over the years that it's surprising what all can get into a high school yearbook, even with advisors. So it, uh, it probably is a cautionary situation. I, would, I wouldn't want to be this factor <laughs> and have to be the decider you know, all by myself. Have you had any experience with this, Mr. Jensen? Uh, some experience with it. It is usually done through the communications, traditionally done in the school district. I, I've worked with several school districts that have done this. Usually if there's a point of question, it's usually referred back to the superintendent who then says, you know, could see okay or the green light or the red light on that if it's a, a, a thing that's in question. Thank you. Okay. That's all I have in that section. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, item A is the CSE recommendations, recommendations from the Committee on Special Education for the month of August. And uh, we had uh, <coughs> 10 initial referrals and uh, 36 students transferred into the district during the month. Uh, newly classified, 33 students, 10 at the preschool level and 23 at the school age level, kindergarten to 12. Uh, no students declassified, of course, it was a slow month, uh, August. Uh, there were 14, uh, 11 conducted uh, reviews and three requested for a total of 14. There were five students on home instruction. That was in lieu of the extended school year program. So these are students who needed a, an extended school year program and they were on home instruction because of the disabilities. And uh, we didn't have any suspensions, of course. It was uh, the month of August. Questions? Yes, Mr. Lewis. Number six. Yes, Mr. The number of students with disabilities in home instruction. Are these students getting their two hours? Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, they, they got two hours uh, daily, five days uh, each week. And they have an IEP that says two hours is sufficient. Yeah, in lieu of uh, the extended school year program, one of them was not able to go to the school so that the, we had to send the 
uh, the, to, the, to the home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Legal? If, as long as the services that are that in the IEP can be provided oh. within that time frame, I, I don't know for each individual seen. child. Yes. Yeah, two hours that seem possible. That would be. <clears throat> yes, Ms. Resch. Do the students and the teachers have to sign off on that on those home visits? Yes. The, the students sign off if, if and the teachers. Yes. And they are there and a, an adult has to be present. It's always a third person who is present in the house. And the adult signs off also. The next item is a resolution to authorize uh, the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Thomas Kelly Software to purchase Easy SES Software, uh, which is the same software that was purchased in the previous two years to manage the SES program. Questions? Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Moriega. Our next item on the agenda is from the Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. The first um, resolution that we're proposing is a resolution to authorize the Superintendent of Schools to execute agreements with the Boys and Girls Club of Newburgh to provide activities and services to students in after-school programs at GAMS and NFA North. And the funding source is the Extended Day Violence Prevention Grants. Yeah. Um, item B is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Houghton Mifflin Harcourt to purchase aerobics foundations web licenses, on-site support sessions as professional development for staff and classroom multimedia kits. Item C is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with TeachScape Incorporated to purchase electronic evaluation and teacher observation software licenses and electronic evaluation system consultant services. And the funding source is strengthening teacher and leader effectiveness grant. We've been using this already, right, Dr. Shanahan? We haven't been using this part of TeachScape, but we have. Um, uh, contracted with TeachScape uh, for professional development to uh, certify evaluators um, in the um, teach evaluation system. Other questions on this item? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. How will we use the consultant service? Uh, the, the actual contract that we're talking about for TeachScape is to assist teach, uh, principals and assistant principals on electronic scripting of the observation. So the electronic scripting, as, as they're in observing the lessons, they're doing it through an online kind of scripting uh, tool that helps them to align what they're observing to the Danielson framework for teaching. In order to do that, we need technical assistance on how to utilize it, how do we make sure that what we're collecting is truly evidence-based, going back to all those foundations that we established during learning-focused uh, supervision. So it's not only on how to use the, the actual equipment, but it's to refresh us that we are truly looking for evidence-based practices. So does that mean that more than just the administrator will be in the classroom? There's a component of this that teachers will have access to. Um, uh, actually, let me go back. The assistant principals, directors, and principals have the opportunity to observe teachers. The only one that has the opportunity to evaluate a teacher is the principal. Right, but my question is, will the consultant be in the classroom with that administrator? We have an opportunity to design the professional development based on what our needs are. 
So we will meet with the administrators and the uh, uh, central office uh, personnel that are responsible for this and design and develop that professional development based on the amount of money we have to uh, allocate towards that. Because a stranger in the classroom could throw things. Right. We, we, have a, we have a choice. We can do on-site observation, uh, we can do on-site support, or we can do just webinars. Um, we would like to do a blended model of both. And don't forget, we still have the contract with uh, Miravia, where the Miravia representatives, the Danielson Framework certified uh, pro professionals are coming in to go into the schools this year to work with the assistant principals and the principals to do the observations and to debrief and to support the teachers in, in that process and, and guide the conversation during pre-observations. Uh, so last year was the foundational training, now it's the implementation and the support during the implementation of that. But that's done separate from TeachScape, that's done through Miravia, which was the, the training that we used to uh, get everyone on board with what the framework for teaching really was about but also what learning focused supervision was about. Other questions? Okay. All right, item D is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute a consultant agreement with CASDA to guide the development of the school improvement department, review organizational capacity, and provide professional development in data-driven inquiry. The funding source is the um, systemic support for district and school turnaround grant. Okay. Item E is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement with Scholastic Inc. to purchase reading and phonics intervention for students at Horizons on the Hudson. And the funding source is IDEA Part B and Title I Part A. No. Mr. Forger goes. And uh, finally, item F is a resolution to approve conference requests. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. I have a comment about how delighted I am to see the math teachers go to the conference. I, I, I highlighted them. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Mr. Pisa will be reporting. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to authorize the awarding of the 2012-2013 district transportation bids. Resolution B is to authorize the awarding of 2012-2013 fall athletic transportation bids. Questions? Okay. Resolution C is to declare books and equipment surplus and obsolete and to authorize this disposition of the same. Resolution D is to accept the donation of furniture to the Newburgh and Large City School District. <coughs> Resolution E is to approve Increase the Newburgh Free Library 2012-2013 fund budget using funds donated by the Friends of the Newburgh Free Library. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. Muriel, what's that going to be used for? Furniture at the town branch. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yes, Muriel. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Resolution F is to approve Newburgh Free Library RCLS ANSCR agreement.
Resolution G, to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 contract with Duchess Bosis. <laughs> Resolution, resolution H to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 contract with Monroe to Orleans Bosis. Resolution I to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 contract with Rockland Bosis. Resolution J, to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 contract with Southern Westchester OCs. Resolution K, to authorize the board president to execute the final 2011-2012 contract with Ulster OCs. Resolution L to approve booster clubs for 2012-2013 school year. Yes, Mr. Lemonstein. Please, um, we're, we're we're approving these final uh, for all these different postings, uh, final figure for last year and the beginning of the school year. We approve a preliminary one for that. But would it would it be important for us to see? What it was, the preliminary versus the final, in reference to all these, these contracts, would that help us in, in looking at, at the, the trends or what's, what we're saving money or what we're spending money? It, it, it might be. Yes, Mr. Forge. Mrs. Pichak, I believe that's the in the backup. I think that's in the, I think it provides you, uh, if you look at For example, Ulster Bosey's contract, it'll tell you what the initial contract was and what the amount was, and then the current contract. It gives you the, the trend in the, in the supplemental information. And then the front page gives you the actual cost for, for last year. Okay, so like Ulster Bosey's, the initial contract was $464,000. Just and, and oh, I'm sorry. Just for that one line. See, see the first line on that. That's for for line number 030, mm -hmm. and then it goes to 060. So 030's initial contract was 461 166. Resolution M to authorize payment of property tax refunds pursuant to court orders. Uh, number one is SDL number 95-167, Northeast Business Associates, 4 and 5. Number two is SDL number 95-11.32, Again, Northeast Business Associations, Associates Board 5. And is a resolution to accept bills and reports. I just have one more question. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to go back to. Um, on the booster clubs, um, have we received the backup documentation on who um, is in charge of the booster clubs? Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. Next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through L. Before I go through the headings, I just want to mention the rescissions that are there. 
These are to make corrections of um, items that were presented to the board at a prior meeting, mostly at the August meeting. You'll see that in the small print at the bottom. And after consultation with council this evening, there has to be another correction to item A. Um, when you have a half-time teacher or a teacher less than full-time, um, you do not have to grant them probation. They become like part-time temporary um, teachers. So that will be that change will be reflected next week. So with that said, um, on the human resources agenda items A through L, we have on the professional side appointments, change of status, change of location, home teacher appointments, return from leave of absence, and a leave of absence. And on the civil service side, we have appointments, leave of absence, retirements, and a former employee who passed away. And also next week, um, there was a request to separate item D as a separate item to be voted on separately. Resolution M is to create a math position, a reading position, teacher position, a special ed teacher position, five teaching assistant positions, and seven teacher aid positions. The funding source is different for the different positions, so we, it was listed separately. Um, the two, the math and reading teacher come out of Title um, One. There's The first one says Title Two. there's gonna be a transfer out of Title Two into Title One, so that's why both funding sources were listed. For item number three, the creation of the special ed teacher, um, we had included in our Ulster BOCES contract funds to pay Ulster BOCES to provide a teacher through Ulster BOCES to provide the service and it's more cost effective for us just to hire the teacher ourselves. So we'll make an amendment to the Ulster BOCES contract and the difference in that money will cover the, the salary for that item. And then, as discussed in personnel, the additional teaching assistant and teacher aid positions are a result of um, special ed um, children that have entered the district that need the services of a teaching assistant and teacher aid. As discussed at personnel, I indicated that this number is in flux because kids are coming in, some kids aren't showing up. So um, the five teaching assistants stays as is, but as of this afternoon, the seven teacher aides has risen to eight. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. Could I ask about the new teacher? Where will that uh, person be placed? Temple Hill Academy. And so will the math teacher. I just wanted to make sure, in addition to the posting for the three that I had recently seen. They're retired teachers because that service is offered during the day, so none of our folks would be able to do that. So, yes, we did do that, but that's filled mostly by retirees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We can't pay her. We can't pay her. <laughs> you have to wait till next year, Mrs. Yes. Uh, Resolution N is to appoint an additional full athletic coach. This was not on the original resolution. Item O is to approve a tenure recommendation for a teacher. Item P is um, just information on an upcoming tenure recommendation for a teacher. And on the table this evening are a couple additional resolutions, Q and R. <coughs> Resolution Q are the winter athletic coaching appointments as I have them this afternoon. There are a couple missing um, for boys basketball. We're conducting the interviews because there were multiple applicants for that. That's being done tomorrow. Um, we may have to repost cheerleading. There were no applicants for some of the cheerleading spots besides the ones that are on here already. And there was still um, an interview possibly to be conducted for swimming. So by next Tuesday, those recommendations should be included in this resolution. Possibly an interview for swimming? I'm sorry. Yes, there were two applicants for swimming. 
Yes, Ms. Kovac. I just have a question. Um, when, when we got this, I noticed that uh, in, in our packet the other day when we initially got the uh, winter sports, it, it, it said that the 10-day um, thing was basically waived. It wasn't a 10-day opening. Uh, was there a reason for that? Um, that we didn't have a 10-day posting? Yes, thank you. To get it on this month's agenda, that we shortened the um, posting period, and it was it was shortened with in consultation with the union. Since some we I wanted to get it on earlier than normally, because some of these coaches want to start this prep work that they do, and. I don't like, they shouldn't be working unless they're board approved to do the work. So I did rush it along this, this time. No, my only concern was that a short period like that, you might have somebody that, you know, because I noticed that probably most of these are just one person said, I'll take the job or whatever. Um, you know, and it wasn't, it was only a couple days that it was open, right? I think it was five days. Was it that long? We did a we did another posting at the same time that was only two days. Right. That was for the SLO writing. That was not for winter coaches. So there was one that was even shorter than this one. But I will tell you that I did receive some late and accepted them all and made sure they were all forwarded to the athletic director. So which is our practice normally. So Plus it comes in weeks later, then I don't accept it. Okay, so basically for the winter uh, sports, we want to have them in place in September, even though they can't start practicing until November, right? Right. And so the fall sport, when are they going to be hired? They should have been hired in July. In and July. they were not because there were the football people were on the field before the board had um, given authority mm -hmm. to have that happen. Correct. So they should have been done in July. And that's the reason why we moved this one up to make sure it didn't happen with the winter sports, that the kids would be ahead of the season and the coaches kind of with them. Okay. Is July early enough for the fall? It I'm should saying. be. We normally post those, um, the fall coaches before school ends. Right. We then again post it like the first week of school, or okay. anybody new or missed it at the end of June. But we do try, you know, I know they do. Ideally, it should be done in July. Right. Because I know that even though it's not formal, that they do some clinics and that sort of thing in the intro. So uh, conditioning, I think they call it. Conditioning, conditioning or whatever. Right. Um, which the state allows them to do now, which they didn't in the past. Uh, what I was thinking is, is uh, if July, if we're doing it September for November, if July was early enough to do it, or should we do it? You know, in the future, like June, mm -hmm. uh, so that they have the summer. Because mm -hmm. I know some of them can't, you know, the camps and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And then I mean, there's no reason why we can't, because we can get the posting out certainly in enough time right. to have something to the board in June. Spring, maybe uh, end of January. January. Mm -hmm. Starts early mm -hmm. March. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Mack. I remember a, a question had uh, come up earlier about the SLO uh, posting, which I had sent to you. Um, how, how are our teachers informed of the posting? Is it just put up on the, it used to be just put up on the bulletin board in the office. Now, is, is that okay now? And, and well, maybe they get an email or what? We don't you? email in, out to individual teachers. Um, it's sent to the buildings electronically. It's still posted on a bulletin board. Um, it's also posted on the district's website. Okay, but if something's only going to be posted for like two days. Okay, but that, that was a very strange thing that will never happen again, I can assure you, because it was a disaster. Um, we did, for that one, send an email to every single teacher, which I have no intention of doing again. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. You know, um, I there's a reason for the 10 days, right? I mean, first of all, it's contractual, but it speaks to Sue's point that it gives all parties ample opportunity exactly. to see the posting, mm -hmm. ask clarifying questions about a posting. So ideally, we'd like to stay to the 10 days. Every once in a while, something happens 
the two days will happen again. <laughs> and um, I believe, Mrs. Mack, the, the one you originally asked me about was back for June for the SLOs. Right, it was before and, the two days. Right, yeah. right. So, um, and I remember one of the things I said, you know, those employees that are really looking for the extra work, they literally do check on a daily basis because you were like, well, not everyone checks that daily, but if you're wanting work, you're checking that daily. <laughs> I think that what it is, though, Don, is that sometimes a person is not necessarily wanting work, mm -hmm. but they would want that work. If, you know, in other words, that particular thing would be something they would have wanted. So I think that's the distinction. And sorry. the last resolution is Resolution R. These are all the other Schedule J appointments. Um, there are a few missing from this as well that um, we're still working on. So hopefully they'll be, it'll be complete when you get it in your um, packets um, over the weekend or on Friday. There's no new clubs there. Um, all the items that were discussed during the budget process to be eliminated for the year, they're not there. Do you have any questions about anything that is there? Ms. Prokash? Can we have an executive session from Yes. Yeah. There's a couple on here I'd like to discuss in, in executive session if we could. Okay. Do, do I have to tell you which ones? Yes. Oh. Okay. I don't think you could. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> okay. And that concludes my items. Thank you, Mrs. Weimer. Be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purposes to discuss matters regarding the employment history of particular individuals. I have a motion. But the board will not be taking action after executive session. Can I have a motion? Second. Roll call, please. Uh, Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Gretz? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, everyone, for being here this evening.